Okay, I've got a few questions for you today, people are having good. First question I've got for you is, is football coming home? Right? Is it coming home? I've got my English shirt on today, as you can see. Three lines on my chest. You know we can't go wrong. Speaking for England. Is football coming home? Can I have a cheer if it is? Hooray! Hey! Nobody in Harrogate <laughs> thinks football is coming home. Well, this is tragic. Absolutely tragic. Okay. Well, listen, I'm, I'm going to talk to you today about football. We're going to look at the greatest substitutes ever. Okay? Now, first one everyone thinks of when they think of substitutes is they think of this fella, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Anyone heard of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer? Yeah? He's got loads of goals for United come off the bench. Most famously, of course. In 1999 to win the treble. Game on, last few minutes. Uh, yeah, we're losing 1 0. Amazing, he turned it around after the 90th minute. Turned it around, won the cup. And by Munich, Germans were beating the fists to the floor. We've got, are you a United fan, sir? He's looking fondly there, that wonderful memory. But do you know what? He's not the greatest substitute ever. What about this guy, the original super sub? This is where the name came from. The guy called David Burkhoff. Okay, he did even better than Oligo Solskjaer. Are they going to Solskjaer? 17 goals off the bench. David Fairclough, 18 goals off the bench. But you know, he's not the greatest substitute ever. What about this guy? Javier Hernandez, another United player. 19 goals off the bench. Is he the greatest substitute ever? He's not, you know. He's not the greatest substitute ever. What about this fella? Well, he's won the World Cup. So is it him? Anybody recognise him? Who's that? Frenchman won the World Cup. It's Oliver Giroud. Oliver Giroud. Is he the greatest? He's got 21 goals off the bench. Does that make him the greatest super sub ever? The greatest substitute? No, it's not him. Right, what about this fella? Anybody recognise him? He played for England. He's playing for a Scottish team there. Who's he? Yeah, yeah, you got it, sir. Jermaine Defoe. There's a man who knows his football. I bet he's expecting England to win tomorrow, right, sir? Yeah, come on, England. Yeah, Jermaine Defoe, he got 24 goals off the bench as a substitute, which is pretty impressive, do you know? He is not the greatest substitute ever. Do you know who the greatest substitute ever is? This fella. It's Jesus. Now you're all looking at me thinking, what? <laughs> I don't remember Jesus playing football. How can Jesus be the greatest substitute ever? Well, so I'll tell you what makes Jesus the greatest substitute ever. Because he came out, he came down from heaven to earth, and he took my place. That's what a substitute does, doesn't it? A substitute comes on the pit and takes the place of the other person. Well, Jesus was my substitute. He came down to earth and took my place on the cross. He died on the cross so that I can be forgiven. He was nailed to that cross. Now, I've got a cross on my back. It's the cross of... Uh, Jesus, did you know that the cross on the English flag is actually representative of Jesus' cross? Because we used to be a great nation that loved God and spread God's word. These days you can get in trouble for doing it in some parts of the world. And a lot of the day, a lot of the time, people don't want to know anymore. There's people passing by today and say, do you know what, Paul? I don't want to hear that. You know, we moved on from that. I was chatting to a fella before. And uh, he just didn't want to know. He's very antagonistic towards these things. He's like, listen, what are you talking about? It's all a load of nonsense. Well, if it's all a load of nonsense, then what do you believe in? And he couldn't tell me what he believed in. And you know what else he couldn't tell me? He couldn't tell me what his hope was in. Well, I've got a great hope today. That's what I'm telling you. Because just like there's a cross on my back, there was a cross on Jesus' back. And he, he was nailed to that cross. And he paid for all my sin and he paid for all your sin you know you don't need to die for your sin and end up in hell you can go to heaven because jesus has already paid for your sin it's already done you know when he was on the cross and he said tetelestai you know what those words mean it means it is finished it's done it's paid for so you can be forgiven today you can go to heaven because jesus has already paid the punishment that we deserve how could Jesus pay that punishment? I'll tell you why he could pay, make that punishment. Because he'd done nothing wrong. He did not need to die. We died because of sin. We all died because of sin. Yeah, I know you've gone to the doctor. We've got doctors out on the bench over there. He's a Christian. And, and, and he's come from India to be a doctor over in this country. But, you know, he would tell you 
that people come to him because they've got a problem. They've got a sin problem. We all die because of sin. Yeah, it might be cancer, it might be dementia, it might be something else, but we all die effectively because of sin. Sin has infiltrated this world, it's ruined it, polluted our bodies, and death has entered the world. The Bible says the wages, the payment of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life, so we can be forgiven, we can be cleansed on the inside, so our sins no longer hurt us, no longer touch us, no longer condemn us to hell, we can go to, to heaven. Because Jesus has paid for them. Jesus has paid for your sin. Now, isn't that fantastic news, people of Harrogate? It's the best news ever. There will be people dancing in the streets tomorrow if England win the, the Euros. They'll be like, yay, come on, England. Hooray. Why don't you be dancing in the streets? But you know what? I've got something even better than that. I've got something even better news than that. And it's that you can live forever. Isn't that, that's good news, isn't it? Yeah. No, I think he's going to do a talk later on. He's going to talk about how every single member of the World Cup 1966 team is dead except for Jeff Burst, the guy who got the hat trick. They're all the all dead. What hope have, have they all got unless they are going to live again beyond this life? But this life is not all there is. There's another life, and it's the life in heaven. And I want that for everybody. We can all go to heaven. Real place can exist. We can all go to heaven because Jesus has made a way beyond the grave for us to get there, which is absolutely fantastic news. And well, that's what the hope that I want. What do you think, sir? It's a funny old game. It is a funny old game. It's a funny old game. It's Jimmy Greaves. It's great Jimmy Greaves with us all. Excellent. Well, there we go, you see. Jimmy Greaves no longer with us. Bobby Charlton no longer with us. But do you know what? You know who is with us, and who can be with you, who can live in your heart, it's the Lord Jesus. And if you've got Jesus Christ in your heart, if you are in Christ... You will go to heaven. He's the greatest substitute ever. The greatest substitute ever. Better than any of these guys that you might recognise there. Jesus, the greatest substitute ever because he took my place, your place, on the cross, paid for our sins so that we can go to heaven. Isn't that fantastic news? Guys, if you're running off some more, please do take a leave it off me. I would love to share some more good news. Thank you.